Today's video we'll be taking a look at another IBM PC 300 PL. We got 20 minute videos on home technology, computers, laser discs, and some CDs. We got two little dogs licking their balls on the screen. And now it's time for the show. So for those of you that have watched my channel for a while, uh, definitely over a year ago, maybe even two years or more, I did a video on a very, very similar machine. As a matter of fact, it more or less used the same uh, case design, and that was the Type 6562. Um, I got that off eBay for a real good deal, but it ended up kind of mashed up, and it, it ended up not really being the model I wanted. I wanted a much later model, and that's actually what this guy is, and I found this locally uh, for like five bucks or something it was a very good price and uh, I snatched it up and here it is right here so this is the IBM uh, PC 300 PL same as before but this is the type 6862 a uh, little bit later model um, I believe the other one used a it was socket 7 um, this one is a slot motherboard and it uses a Pentium 3 uh, if I recall correctly, the machine before the 6562 um, was a little different. It had some knobs here, I believe, it, uh, for audio control. Um, it was also it was a much earlier uh, configuration of the motherboard. I believe it was socket 7. I uh, don't remember the exact CPU in that. This is a slot 1 board. I believe it can take a Pentium 2 or 3. Um, this one was stock with the Pentium 3. You can tell here it has a little Pentium 3 sticker. And uh, it supports AGP. It's a little bit different in there. We'll take a look. But this is kind of originally what I was going for. This is one of the later models of the IBM PC line before they moved on to the NetVista line. So this came out probably, hmm, probably 98, 99, around that time period. Um, I just, I don't know why, but I've just always loved uh, these cases for the PC line. Uh, I, I don't know why, I just really like the case. You have IBM right here, pretty prominent. Uh, you got these like lines, and it is plastic, it is kind of a toolless case, and it does sort of suffer from the same issues as some of the older Macs do, um, that use the all plastic sort of toolless case, where it can crack and get a little fragile and brittle, but it's not too bad on this one. Um, there's not too much to it, but... Uh, yeah, I just really like this case for whatever reason. Uh, the aesthetics really appeal to me. Um, just have a power button right here, and then we have three LEDs. We have the power LED. I uh, believe this is the hard drive activity LED, and this looks like a network activity uh, LED. And we see that on a lot of more business-oriented machines, um, which this probably, it's IBM, so well, <laughs> they do tend to be a little bit more business-oriented than home oriented, although this still would make a fine uh, home PC. Um, so we have a slot here for a floppy drive. This is really intended for a 1.44 megabyte uh, drive. It's built you know, right into the case, although I think this might be able to be removed if you needed to. Um, there's that. And then right here on this side we have a five and a quarter inch bay. Right here we have a CD drive in there. This is not the CD drive that came with this machine. This is an upgrade. Uh, someone put in it at a later date and then it looks like right here this can be removed uh, and you have another five and a quarter inch bay I believe uh, right here you can use if you want to and then we have the Intel inside Pentium 3 sticker right there um, obviously it's a desktop form factor although it is a pretty large uh, desktop PC here so we're just gonna flip it around and take a look on the back all right, so here's the back of the PC. We have a power supply right here. Um, keys for the case. Uh, it's unlocked right now, but this came with uh, two sets of keys. It says IBM on them. Very nice. Uh, expansion ports right here. As you can tell from the orientation, it does use a riser card. One, two, three, four. Um, and then there's a little interesting slot here. We'll take a look at that when we open this machine up. And uh, then if you could see right here, it does have built-in audio. So it looks like we have mic, uh, line in and line out. Then we have an Ethernet adapter right there. Parallel printer port. 
uh, two built-in USB. I believe it's USB 1.1. It even says in marker above it, someone, uh, someone mark V 1.1. So I do believe it is uh, USB 1.1. Two serial ports, two PS2 ports for keyboard and mouse, and then we have built-in video. So we have a VGA style connector right there. So we're going to open this guy up and take a look inside. So to open this guy up, we have these just two little clips here and here. Uh, you just kind of gently push up and then push it forward. I can't really do this with uh, one hand, so I'm just going to take this uh, lid off and then we're going to take a look inside. Okay, so here we are with the lid off this machine. Um, there's our floppy drive right here, power supply, there's that uh, CD-ROM drive or DVD drive. I didn't take a good look at it. Uh, I think it's just a CD drive though. And then there is a bay under there. And then way down at the bottom is our hard drive. I haven't booted this machine up in a while, uh, probably a couple months, uh, it's not since I've received it. So uh, I don't remember what that hard drive is, but I believe standard they came with uh, 20 gigabytes. But like I said, I'm not sure what the size of that is, but it's, it's way down there. Now I did, I do remember, I believe, wiping the drive uh, and installing uh, Windows 98. I don't even know if I wiped that. I might have actually added that drive. I don't even remember. Uh, I mess with so many computers. Um, I don't remember, but I do believe um, there, this machine does have Windows uh, 98 uh, SE installed on it. I don't remember, though, if that was the original driver, if I actually added that drive. Um, I also updated the BIOS on this to the latest BIOS. Um, so here is our motherboard. Um, not much under there. It's a pretty good shape. There's the CMOS battery. Um, there is our CPU. Um, I didn't put this fan on it there, uh, but I don't believe that was how it came, but that's uh, still pretty clever to help with the cooling. Now this is a 450 megahertz Pentium 3, uh, so that is the slowest of the Pentium 3s, but I believe officially, well if you look over here, and I love these things because they're real convenient, uh, on the case cover, other si underside there's a little sticker that tells you what the switch settings are and everything. And according to this, uh, we can do up to 384 megabytes of PC133 memory. And it has settings here for up to 550 megahertz for a Pentium 3. Though I believe you can put in a faster uh, Pentium 3. I believe officially the fastest uh, model they put out had a maybe a Pentium 3 866 megahertz, but I guess theoretically uh, you could go faster than that, maybe a gigahertz, but from what I've read on the internet you might have some issues if you go you know in the higher range. Uh, I've heard even over 700 megahertz uh, CPUs on these machines for some reason you may or may not run into stability issues. Uh, I don't know, I haven't played around with the CPU, although I, I think I'm gonna put something a little faster in there uh, right now, probably I don't even know what I have sitting around. Maybe even just 500 megahertz, so maybe just a 50 megahertz bump. So, yeah, not, not too much of a bump, but I think I have a 500 megahertz Pentium 3 sitting around I can just stick into the sky. Um, there's the switch right there. Uh, and then we have three slots for RAM. Takes PC-133. And uh, like I said, uh, you can take it up to a max of 384 megabytes. I am not sure what is installed right now. Let's take a look. Actually, okay. Looks like 256. Uh, this is a 256 PC 133. And I wonder what this one is. Huh, 256. So 512. Yeah, so I guess I have half a gig of RAM in here, which makes sense. That's the max uh, suggested for Windows 98. A lot of times you'll see that uh, these machines that, you know, they'll have a sheet where maybe it's posted uh, a certain number, but then they actually they'll support more memory than that. So uh, at least I believe it supports the whole 512. I assume I would have cut it down if it didn't to not waste RAM sticks. So we'll see when we boot this up, but it, I think it does support that amount of memory. It's just... That's an older sticker. Um, all right, so we have an Intel chipset right here. And then there is our built-in audio. It uses a crystal uh, chip for the audio. 
There's the crystal chip. Looks like CS4235 KO. Um, you know, it's okay. It, it, it does its job. I'd still suggest if you're going to use this thing for gaming or whatever, you can install a different sound card. And you have option to install PCI or ISA. So we've got three PCI slots and two ISA, which is pretty good, depending on uh, what you want to do with this machine. If you want to do it more for a DOS or Windows or you could, you could even put XP on this thing if you really want to. So it's got a, you got a lot of options. And right there, close to the sound chip, uh, that makes sense. We have our audio cable going to the CD drive. And then for built-in video, we have an S3 Trio 3D. Uh, that's a pretty pretty decent chip, S3, so you got a lot of good compatibility there. The Trio 3D is kind of the mm, successor of the, the Trio chips. Uh, may even be the successor of the Verge. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, it's okay, from what I've read, compatibility with games isn't uh, stellar, at least as far as like Windows. It, it does 3D, um, it does have some 3D acceleration, but it, it's really more of a business-oriented chip from, again, my experience. I don't have any experience using this chip, uh, so just knowing what I've read, uh, it has issues with certain things like Shogo and a couple other games. It's it's really more business-oriented. It will, it will get you by, but... Uh, again, if you're going to game on this, you might want to upgrade. There's a AGP slot right next to it. Now, I'm not too sure about the amount of built-in memory for this S3. Uh, it looks like it might be 2 or maybe even 4 megabytes. It looks like there's solder points for the option of installing uh, like expansion slots to expand the video RAM, but it looks like on this model uh, they opted to not uh, include the ability to expand the RAM there. So you you might seriously want to consider upgrading, and uh, I will be upgrading this machine. But yeah, here is our AGP video slot, very far away from where you would usually find it, which is with the other slots. And that's uh, one of the quirks of this motherboard type. So I don't know if I've mentioned it before. I've probably reviewed other machines that use this kind of motherboard form factor, but this machine uses the NLX form factor, and it was kind of a... Uh, a motherboard form factor that was pushed by Intel and a lot of manufacturers like IBM uh, used it for a while late 90s into the early 2000s and it was kind of a it was kind of the purpose of having like a low cost uh, low profile sort of motherboard and that's why there's some weird things like how the AGP slot is like way over here and then if you look there's this riser card but the motherboard also connects into a weird like slot right there on the side so it's it's a little bit weird it wasn't around too too long but you will come across this form factor in a lot of OEM machines from the time period um, so the one thing with the weird sort of AGP slot being over here is thing right there yeah it, uh, it you need kind of like special form factor video cards unfortunately and it is kind of limiting and I'll show you what I mean here so You've probably seen these cards before and wondered why, like, there's a big, like, piece missing here. <laughs> um, this one has a little weird metal bar across, but you can unscrew it and bend it away. Um, but yeah, Diamond made a lot of cards that were this N NXL or NLX form factor. But yeah, you need a card with, like, this little space area gone. I I've heard with some cards you can modify them if there's nothing on the card here you can cut away. Um, but really the easiest thing is to do cards like this. Now, as opposed to, you know, this is a more traditional, you know, where you might have things there. And this just won't fit uh, in that. Luckily, though, for us, there were a lot of cards from that era that were made in the uh, NLX form factor. Um, like this one. This is a Rage 128. Um, the, this card here, which I was thinking about using, this is the... S3 Savage 4 Extreme. Um, I was thinking about using this card in this machine. It's in that form factor. Um, and they also made the Voodoo. This is a Voodoo 3 in that form factor. Uh, this is probably would be you know one of the better choices. You get Glide. It's a pretty good 2D card too. It's a pretty good all-around card. Uh, the Voodoo 3, so yeah, they made it in that form factor as well. I believe they made cards all the way up to the uh, 
GeForce 256, just the SDR version, uh, you can find that card in the NLX uh, form factor, although it's pretty expensive and hard to find. Uh, but I believe that is the most powerful card they made in that form factor. So something to consider when uh, thinking about a video card if you have this type of machine. And along with that, you'll want a special bracket too. I found this on eBay uh, some time ago. So you'll want to remove the bracket on there and install this one so it will properly uh, install. I, I don't think you need to, but it will look ugly and it probably won't be you know, as stable without this little special bracket. Here I removed the floppy drive and the CPU just to get a better look at this board in general. Uh, there's our CMOS battery. Uh, there's a little PC speaker down there. Looks like an, it has an actual speaker uh, rather than a piezo, which is nice for something this late uh, in the game. Uh, we've got a nice big fan, cooling fan right there. And um, I did already set the jumpers for 500 megahertz because I did find this 500 megahertz Pentium 3. Again, very small, just 50 megahertz uh, jump there. But this is this is nice. Uh, CPU has the heat sink and fan all integrated. Um, so I'll install this. Uh, video card, I think I'm going to go with the Rage 128. Um, the Savage 4 which is probably going to be more interesting, especially for DOS or Quake 3, but I already have the DOS Zilla machine with that one of those cards in it. Um, the smart choice would probably be the Voodoo 3. This would probably be the card that uh, most people would go with when given the option here, but I already have so many machines with Voodoo cards. Um, I, you know, I, I have a, one with a Voodoo 5500, I have one with Voodoo 2, one with Voodoo 1. Um, I don't think there's anything the 3 does that the 5 doesn't, so uh, just for something different, I think I'm not going to go with the Voodoo 3, but, you know, a Voodoo 3 or a TNT 2 or something like that, if you have those, I'd probably go that route for all around card, but just for something different, I am going to go with this Rage uh, 128. This is a pretty decent gaming card, uh, but it's just not an option uh, people go with too often, so give this give this card a try. So I almost got really annoyed because I couldn't find a header for the fan, <laughs> uh, but luckily there is a fan header on the riser card, so uh, I'm glad I looked there and I was able to attach the CPU fan. There's at least one fan header, uh, thankfully. Alright, so I got that little cover piece off and you can see here's our Rage 128 with the uh, NLX uh, bracket on there. So uh, first I want to see, just to see, I want to see if I can, uh, if like a regular card will fit just awkwardly. Um, I think I'll take off the bracket. Maybe not this card. I have a couple cards that already have the bracket off. I'll, let me see if they'll fit. Alright, so some cards will work um, even if they don't have, like, so here, this is the Rage, and this is all missing right here where uh, it's all there on this card. And this card will fit. Uh, so this card does fit in the slot there, and it's not hitting anything. Um, so that would work. Uh, I think we could even probably, the bracket would even work on it. But again, cards, certain cards. So probably the biggest factor on if uh, an AGP card will fit is where the, uh, the VGA connector is. So if it doesn't line up in this particular area here, like if it's a card where the connector's low, it's not going to fit. Or if it's a card that has uh, multiple connections, uh, like that other card we just looked at a second ago, it's not going to fit. Those other connectors uh, either aren't going to poke out or they're going to be hitting something. It's just not going to work. Um, so yeah, I'm still going to go with this guy uh, right here. Okay, yes, uh, I did have this on backwards. But now <laughs> it is on correctly, and uh, now it should fit and secure just fine into that slot. Okay, so I've got the card installed now. Um, so for sound, uh, the crystal chip's decent, but I just because I have it sitting around, I want to try this card here. Now this is a, an A3D card. This uses the uh, Vortex... Uh, AU8810 chip. Um, so the Vortex 1 chip was the 
8820, and then the Vortex 2 was the 8830. Um, now, this isn't actually one that came before that or anything. This is actually sort of a, a cut-down version that they created, I think, in 99. This was kind of meant more as like a budget card. I, I believe it's based on the uh, 8830. So it's kind of like a... It's either a cut-down 8830 or an enhanced 8820. <laughs> I've, I've seen two different explanations of this chip, so it kind of falls somewhere in between the Vortex and the Vortex 2. Um, at least I'm, I'm kind of guessing from what I've read. It, it also has a 56K modem on this card. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to throw this in there, mostly because I have it and I have the driver CD and little manual things. So um, yeah, we'll throw that in there. It should be a little step up from the uh, integrated crystal chip. It at least should give us some of that, you know, 3D uh, sound. So when installing cards on this, um, you don't actually have an individual screw for each expansion slot. Um, you just kind of put your cards in, and then this kind of clips in, and then there's one screw, and this kind of holds them all in. So that's another little interesting quirk of this machine. So here we are, uh, humming along. Um, note with the processor, uh, initially when I tried to power this thing up, it would not power on at all uh, with the 500 megahertz CPU. Um, uh, with the switch setting set for the 500 megahertz as was instructed on that piece of paper but uh, I found out setting things back how they were prior uh, for 450 megahertz then it fired right up even with the 500 megahertz CPU in there and it is at least according to CPU uh, Z humming along at 500 megahertz and it's much much quieter than that uh, 450 megahertz CPU with that uh, fan stuck on it. Uh, one thing to note though, <laughs> uh, if you have one of these machines and you change the CPU, you, uh, make sure in the BIO settings, go to advanced settings, and there's an option under there called something like uh, CPU BIOS update. Uh, make sure that's disabled, because if that's enabled, uh, it seems to go like nuts uh, if you have any other kind of processor in there than what it's supposed to come with apparently. Uh, I kept getting this error and it would just, it wouldn't find the operating system and it would just kind of loop and reboot. So I had to disable that. I, I don't know what the purpose of that is, but make sure it's disabled then you shouldn't have any problems. Uh, got the Vortex card running, had to disable the onboard uh, crystal chips to get that running. And then we do have the... Uh, Rage uh, 128 in there, although uh, the machine can't make up its mind on uh, if it's a Magnum or an Expert. Uh, I have no idea. Uh, they're pretty much the same. I think the Magnum has 32 megabytes of RAM and the Expert has 16 megabytes of RAM, but yeah, I'm not 100% sure uh, which version this card is. I guess I could probably examine the card a little bit more and look for numbers and figure it out that way, but uh, for some reason it's not telling me through CPU-Z. should also note that this system is detecting the 512 megabytes of RAM without any issues. Alright, so here we are with the machine all set up. Uh, I've tried to uh, set this up as well as I can, but uh, as longtime viewers of this channel know, I don't have a lot of space to work with and I don't have a nice really a nice workbench or work area so we're always working on the bed or the floor so again excuse the uh, poor production values I suppose <laughs> I might have mentioned it in earlier videos but I do want to do a little bit more when I show off these computers uh, I want to show the full computer um, actually working and running and uh, I of course always like prefer to use CRTs with these classic machines but uh, just for the sake of simplicity I did pick up this nice uh, beige uh, older sort of flat screen monitor so uh, yeah it is kind of looking awkward because it's pushed way back uh, but that's just so uh, I can get everything in the frame so uh, just taking a real quick look here I'm gonna play a MIDI tune real quick and uh, here's that vortex drivers for that vortex card Got a digital out enabled. 
A3D settings, just little little things like that. All right, and uh, using Power Strip here, taking a look at that Rage card again. I believe it is one of the lower end. Uh, I think it's the Expert 128, maybe. Because uh, it has these 90 megahertz speeds for the clock and the memory. And I believe that was the lower end cards that had the 90 megahertz. Um, and I think it only has 16 megabytes of uh, RAM on it. So, And I have disabled the vertical sync just for some benchmarking. So uh, let's take a look at some games on this.
Six, nine, 27 miles. Medium, east, bandit, bandit. Spike GCI at 11 o'clock. Rhino, threat bearing 269, 23 miles. Medium, closing. Low, altitude. Music off. Missile inbound. 11 o'clock. Music on. Music off. Chevy 2. Fox 3. Incoming missile. Two. 11 o'clock. Music on. Chevy 3. Fox 3. Incoming. Chevy 4. Fox 2. Chevy 5. Fox 2. Rhino. Chevy 3. Has five, ejected. Strike, Request immediate eight, SAR scramble. 5. Splash my bandit. Chevy 1. Rhino. Negative. No assets available. So here's a question. Will it work? with the Tualatin Power Leap Adapter. I guess there's only one way to find out. And it appears it does uh, work with the Power Leap Adapter. So I'm getting a speed of 1.3 gigahertz. Um, so yeah, it, it seems that it is working with that Power Leap Adapter. Now keep in mind I did upgrade this to the latest BIOS version I could find so if you have one of these machines and you haven't updated the BIOS uh, I can't guarantee that something like the Power Leap adapter or later Pentium 3's will work on this machine but it does appear with the latest BIOS um, that you can get some pretty high uh, speed CPUs in there now I don't know about stability with this CPU paired with this board I, I just tried this out so um, you know, miles may vary for you. It might have some stability issues. I don't know. Uh, I'm probably not going to extensively test it. Um, but I don't know. I, I kind of want to leave it in there. Uh, so, um, yeah. Uh, keep in mind, uh, that my BIOS update might have something to do with, you know, the uh, switches acting not how they're supposed to on the data sheet. I don't know for sure, but um, that could be why... Uh, just leaving it at the default, you know, I didn't have to change the, the switches. Um, so I don't know, but yeah, that's pretty neat. Uh, definitely seeing some improvement there with uh, Final Reality. So, so far it seems pretty stable. So that's our look at this IBM 300 PL uh, with the Pentium 3 CPU in it. I really like this machine, despite some of its design shortcomings, I do really like this machine. I mean, sure, you can get better results if you go out there and get a tower and handpick your motherboard and this and that, but uh, there's just a certain flair about this kind of oversized desktop machine, and of course it being IBM, it just kind of gives it a its own sort of neat personality, and I think this machine could potentially make a really good, uh, like, Windows 9X uh, 95 or 98 machine, or even like a fast uh, DOS machine. I think it could really excel at that. Um, you know, you don't have to go crazy like I did, well, like I eventually did when I put in the Power Leap. You don't need that. Um, just throw in whatever CPU you want from the Pentium 2 or the Pentium 3 line. Uh, it seems like it should support everything up to a, a gigahertz Pentium 3, although those are pretty rare. So yeah, you should be good. Throw in a a six or seven hundred uh, megahertz Pentium 3, you'd be good for a Windows 98 machine. Or if you're looking for fast DOS or something a little slower, just throw in a Pentium 2 of whatever speed you're liking. Um, video card choices, you're a little limited uh, AGP wise because of that weird the slot. Um, but it, it's not too bad. And I, I know they made them in, up into that form factor all the way up to, I think, uh, I think I mentioned it before, GeForce. Um, 256, just the SDR version. Those are pretty expensive, hard to come by, but uh, yeah, you know, throw in a Voodoo 3. Uh, I know a lot of people love Voodoo 3. I know there's some people that don't like it so much, but you know, that's a good option. Uh, throw in a TNT 2, whatever. Diamond made a bunch of video cards that, that fit that form factor, so you're pretty good for that 98, Windows 98 era as far as video cards go. Throw in a PCI or even an ISA sound card of your choosing. Um, you, I think you get enough slots in this thing to set it up uh, decently. Uh, it's got built-in USB. I think you're good to go. So, yeah, I really do like this machine. I'm going to, even though I have some space limitations, and I already have machines that kind of 
fill the niche that this machine excels at. I, I, I feel like I want to keep this machine around. Um, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it, but I think I'm definitely going to keep it. I just, I really love the style of this kind of large desktop case. So, um, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, you know, subscribe, like, hit the bell, whatever. Or don't. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Um, but yeah, uh, please leave some comments in the comment section. Love reading comments. Uh, what do you think about this machine? Uh, what do you think about upgrades or options for it? Did you have one of these computers growing up? Let us know. And uh, thanks for watching this video, and I'll uh, see you in the next one.